everyone, Ariel Adams here with a blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of two different versions of the same Seiko Grand Seiko Quartz Diver. The black dialed version is the SBGX117 and the white dialed version, it's actually silver, is the SBGX115. And you heard me correctly, these are Grand Seiko Quartz diver watches and before I really sort of pick up the watch and talk about it I want to discuss the larger concept of how a watch lover comes full circle to starting with quartz appreciating mechanical and then in some limited instances going back and appreciating quartz inside these watches is a movement made by Seiko it's the 9F family quartz movement this movement exists in a couple of their watches. Now, I set these watches both myself, so the time is a little bit off on each because I just set it differently. Um, I believe this one with a white dial is to the second, whereas this one is a, is a little bit ahead. The 9F movement is probably one of the best quartz movements in the world. Um, and you're thinking, okay, whatever, it's still a quartz movement. Yeah, but not really. Um, First of all, you see those nicely sized, large hands. Look at that ticking seconds hand. That is a precise, solid tick. That, se that seconds hand does not deviate. It does not vibrate. It does not shake. It is hitting those marks precisely and accurately. The 9F movement is first a high torque quartz movement, meaning that it is able to carry larger sized hands. It's accurate to about 10 seconds a year. It doesn't need to be serviced for like every 50 years. It's got a bunch of cool tech in there. It's, it's assembled by hand. It's, you know, it's the fine mechanical movement of quartz movements, if you want to call it that. And I appreciate it for what it is. I appreciate that this is quartz at its finest. This reminds me of when quartz was big in the 80s and you had a lot of Swiss companies producing quartz movements. You had Rolex doing quartz, and they were great. They were great quartz movements. They were exceptionally well made, and that's what the 9F is, but even more advanced and more high tech than those are. There's some other interesting little qualities the 9F movement has that I think I'll discuss more in the review portion. Also, um, this particular version has no date, so this is one of the few Seiko dive watches that has a clean symmetrical dial, so that's something cool. Um, and I just love these. I just, I just, you know, love these a lot. I don't know what it is. I'm just very interested and attracted to these particular quartz movements. Yeah, they're quartz movements. Do I typically prefer mechanical movements? Sure, but um, there's just something about these I like. I actually like the the silver dial a little bit more, but this black dial is, of course, a little bit more classic. So being in the Grand Seiko collection, um, you have a couple of interesting. Um, elements here, of course, is the sort of overall high quality. Um, there are, most of the Grand Seiko watches are, of course, dressy watches, but they have a lot of sport watches as well, and these divers are among those. You have a very typical, classic, kind of techie Seiko dive watch look. These are only water resistant to 200 meters and not 300 meters. For the most part, that doesn't really matter, um, but that's interesting. I'm not sure why Seiko didn't choose to go the full 300 meters they could. Um, sapphire crystal, very high quality. Love the, the, the action here when you turn the bezel. Just a great, I'm gonna put the microphone actually close to here. You can hear this. That is, that is just a nice sound overall. I, I, I just, that's just a great sound if you want. Um, a bezel just to sound great. I mean, yes, is it is it a nerdy watch guy thing to be interested in like the feeling of a rotating bezel? Yeah, but you know what? When you're paying, you know, thousands of dollars for a watch, yeah, you want every little element to be highly perfect. Um, fit and finish is good. <clears throat> you know, it's hard to it's hard to equate a Grand Seiko watch to say like a, a, a Rolex Submariner or something like that. They're two entirely different beasts. And when you put a Rolex or a Swiss high-end dive watch next to something like this, you're not experiencing the same thing. You're really comparing two totally different types of products. Um, this is different. The way it's produced is different. The way it feels is different. The way it's finished is a little bit different. 
it's good and you can compare them on a lot of levels, but at the same time, there's distinct philosophies to how they do things. In terms of the dial, Seiko does it very, very well. You have these wonderful applied elements, beautiful polishing, great legibility, fantastic luminant, just a really good job. I always found it weird that it says Seiko, and then underneath this says Grand Seiko, which I think is kind of funny that it has to say that both. Why it can't just say Grand Seiko, I'm not sure. Uh, one thing about this watch is the, the deployment class is quite thick. Finishing on it is great, but it is a quite sort of wide, uh, wide, you know, chunky off the wrist. One of the reasons that it is that because it has this micro adjust, which is great. So what you do is you put it on, you, and then you have this part which ratchets, which um, you can close to a precise fit on the wrist. That also acts as the diver's extension. So I'll take that off again, and you can see how that works. Um, there's various other Seiko watches that have, have this in the Marine Master Collection. So you can see there are kind of opens up and then it ratchets closed and it offers um, just a really great ability to have a precise fit on the wrist. The this is steel of course and the case size is just under 43 millimeters wide. So again this is the black version which is the SBGX117. I actually have come to like this version a little bit better and this is a weird watch. You have a black bezel, you have kind of a whitish silver dial. People are saying you know why did Seika do that? Um, are they just trying to be kind of weird and quirky on purpose? Maybe, maybe, but I find this to be a little bit more of a distinctive look and I like the, the dial better because you really see those hour indicators pop up there. It's very three-dimensional. It just offers a really great look. Um, you know, a lot of the detailing here is going to be a lot finer than you're going to find on a less expensive, you know, Seiko dive watch. You're not going to get those nice beveled edges. You're not going to get sort of the overall fit and finish. But at the same time, it really is, rather than being sort of in its own crazy world, it is kind of a just a high-end Seiko diver. So if you love Seiko divers and have a bunch of them and sort of want the apex of that experience, you go to the Grand Seiko dive watches. If you're looking for like the a luxury luxury experience, which is like a highly designed, refined Euro style dive watch, you go to one of the European makers. You know, you go, you get a you get a Rolex, you get a Blanc Pont, you get a Chopard, you get some fancy dive watch from one of those companies. That's going to cost you more, um, but that's when you get that sort of um, European style. This is still a Japanese style dive watch, just really, really good, really, really well made. It's not, it doesn't even perform better in terms of the, the diving quality. I mean, most people aren't diving these. There's lots of, you, if you want a 200 meter water resistant Seiko diver, you can spend under $200. You don't have to spend, you know, $4,000 that would, would cost you to buy this watch, but you're not getting that. You're buying it for the sort of the overall fit and finish, the, the detailing, the elements, and that very, very fine movement. And so it's, it's an acquired taste. It's something which requires a lot of years of appreciation to even understand um, a timepiece like this. I mean, it's just on paper, this is weird. It's a Seiko, Grand Seiko, 200, 200 meter dive watch with a very high end quartz movement. I mean, just super weird and super niche, um, but just the type of thing that when you're a watch lover, you love these, these flavors. And it's not for everyone, but I think it's super cool and um, I really enjoy this. So again, these are the Seiko Grand Seiko Quartz Divers. This is the SBGX115 that I'm holding. There's also the SBGX117. Retail price is $4,100, and you can see the full review on a blog to watch soon. Thanks.